intervene and banish evil uh, from the world, giving us utopia. All this is, is expected to happen before the year 2240, so you know, plenty of time. Buddhism has a sort of end time scenario in that it was predicted that the moral teachings of Buddhism would eventually be replaced by widespread immorality. Then a new Buddhist leader would arrive to renew the faith and rediscover the path to Nirvana. Hindus have a similar understanding of a cycle of prevailing morality and then immorality. Whenever evil and chaos becomes dominant, there will emerge an incarnation of God to lead, pe to lead people back to righteousness. Islamic holy books give dozens of signs for the coming of Judgment Day. These include the spread of immorality, again, and the coming of an antichrist figure who deceives people into following his false religion. He is later defeated by a return Jesus and the Mahdi as the final Muslim caliph. Then the Mahdi will establish the true Islam and the world will live in peace. There will then be the bodily resurrection of the dead and a last judgment. The righteous are sent to a heaven, while the unrighteous are left to die on earth or sent to hell. Um, the, the similarities with the Christian scenario are, are fairly clear, even down to the mention of Jesus. And this shows that Islam is closer to Christianity than the adherents of either religion would like to admit. These beliefs were originally influenced by Zoroastrianism, which has the oldest end times myth in recorded history, dating from 500 BC. It was predicted that the sky would darken, crops would stop growing, and immorality would be widespread. There would be a battle between the righteous and the wicked before a final judgment. Then the world would become perfect, with disease, hunger and death halted forever. Zoroastrianism influenced Judaism and subsequently Christianity and Islam when they emerged. And presumably the Zoroastrians were influenced by even older myths and legends which haven't survived. Perhaps the ultimate origin of end times beliefs could be the passing of the seasons. As summer changes to winter, plants die, the days shorten, the temperature drops and the weather becomes less comfortable. Lacking an understanding that seasons are connected with the planet's orbit, our ancestors may have interpreted this as the world ending. A particularly bad winter would have claimed lives, maybe of those who uh, hadn't worshipped their gods enough. When spring arrived and the weather improved and plants started to grow again, uh, it would have seemed like the planet was being reborn. Of course, all this happens every year, which echoes the cycles in Buddhism and Hinduism, rather than the one-off events in the Abrahamic religions. There is a closer link with the seasons in Norse end times mythology. It was believed that a strong winter would seize the earth and bring fighting and disorder. This occurs just before Ragnarok, which is the battle between the gods and the forces of chaos. Both sides perish and almost everything in the universe is torn asunder. Only two gods survive to rule over a new world. So we've seen that the influences that each religion has had on each other over the, century, over the centuries, especially in their formative years, could explain why they share features, including similar end times beliefs. But why do they need to have this scenario? Partly it's to do with hope. Um, religion has offered hope in many ways. Hope of a loving creator who's always watching over us. Hope of rebirth into a utopian afterlife. These beliefs offer security, which is always important, but maybe more so when people lived under the constant threat of deprivation, starvation and war. An end times belief offers hope that poor living conditions can come to an end and be justified by salvation. But of course, as, as I mentioned earlier, a significant part of end times beliefs involves the punishment and torture of those who don't believe in the God. It could be argued that the tribulation is a piece of wish fulfilment, um, with Christians vicariously using God to administer revenge on unbelievers. This reveals the violent and vengeful nature of a supposedly peaceful faith like Christianity. So, I would argue that end times beliefs offer two psychological crutches, hope of a better world and violent revenge. However, the influence of end times beliefs extends beyond religion. It, it could also be the origin of our liking for apocalyptic novels and films, from War of the Worlds to Independence Day. The connection is more explicit for those stories where a catastrophe is caused by, or is a judgment of, human failings. For example, the development of nuclear weapons um, led to several depressing novels and films warning of the consequences of atomic war. Um, perhaps the best example is a, a novel called The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. 
this is set many years after a nuclear war, and um, the survivors uh, living in sort of quite primitive conditions. Um, but they refer to uh, the nuclear war um, beforehand as the tribulation, and they're all um, golf bothers. Um, so we've, we've seen that end time scenarios tend to follow a similar pattern. Stripped to its basics, there is a period of adversity caused by humanity's failure to live according to the right principles. A small group of believers stands up to this and to some extent are protected from it. After an ultimate battle between good and evil, the survivors live in harmony in a utopia. So remember that this myth has persisted over thousands of years in many different forms. And I would argue that as this pattern of belief has been around for so long, it's become ingrained in the way that we think of the future. And I, I don't know if anyone's uh, cottoned on to what I'm leading up to, but uh, I'd say there are even some parallels between the end time scenario and revolutionary socialism. Um, the tribulation could correspond to a period of declining capitalism. Just as Christians believe that society has to become more immoral and godless, some socialists believe that we need to enter a period of social and economic crisis before a revolution is possible. During this time of uncertainty, everything will come to a head and society will change drastically. There will be an end of history. The parallels continue with the similarities between God's paradise after Armageddon and socialism. Both are utopias which seem difficult to describe in much detail. The, the similarity is perhaps clearer if we think in a dialectic way. <coughs> with this type of explanation, both end times beliefs and revolutionary socialism share a pattern of a new situation arising from the conflict of two opposing forces. And this differs from the more mainstream view that the future will get gradually better through piecemeal reforms. Um, I, I should emphasise before I get shot down in flames that I only think that there's an analogy here. Um, but the, the content of each predicted scenario and the justifications for them are very different indeed. Um, firstly, there's uh, the role of supernatural beings. Um, no one expects Karl Marx to descend from the clouds and lead us into socialism. And I doubt that a revolution would involve locust, horse, scorpion monsters stalking the earth. Um, but more, more seriously, um, religious end time scenarios are all about accepting the word of an authority figure, while socialism <coughs> is all about democracy, cooperation, and thinking for yourself. And also, um, the, the end time scenario involves violent revenge on unbelievers, and this would have no place in a democratic revolution, probably. But I think that the analogy is strong enough to suggest that there's something similar in the thought patterns of both socialists and the religious. Um, and that, that's where I'll, I'll leave it on that point. Um, I, I don't want the discussion afterwards to concentrate too much on this, though, because um, um, our next session will um, uh, consider um, comparisons and contrast between socialism and religion. But I hope I've given you a, a, a taste of some of the wackier <coughs> beliefs in the Bible, and also how, um, how end times beliefs um, have parallels not only with um, other religions, but also with the way that we think of the future in general. Thank you. George Monbiot I couldn't have put it better, could he, Mike, really? You sound exactly just like him. Um, I don't agree with George Monbiot, though. Right. Well, what does George um, Monbiot say? He says very similar things, actually, you know, that we're, we're, we're having fun at the end of, of the world is nigh, mm -hmm. right? And I think that buys into a very, um, if you like, I would say anti-human post-enlightenment angst that the ruling elite, particularly in the West, is experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of human progress and actually the future being better than the past is something that has been ditched, you know, um, the, the left in particular seem to be uh, wanting to conserve um, the uh, notion of, of, of the past being, being better than the future, and that's something that, you know, um, I think is a boon for, for, for real revolutionary socialists, but I think the, the, the issue that about, you know, the idea